Welcome to Hiroshima and Nagasaki 76, Healing Souls, Healing Nations, and warm greetings to all of you here in this Zoom room and to all of you watching on the internet around the world. We especially welcome our friends from Japan who are with us today, and we have provided a special simultaneous interpretation between English and Japanese. And our Japanese friends can access that by going to the small globe uh, icon, which you will find at the bottom of your screen. If you click that globe, please select the Japanese language. Uh, we are grateful to have two interpreters with us today, Kumiko Zushi and Yashio Mochizuki. Thank you to the both of you. Let's take a group breath together as we begin this sacred program of commemoration. Nagasaki and Hiroshima, healing souls and healing nations. After the first atomic bombs were dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Masahisa Goi of Japan authored the universal message, May Peace Prevail on Earth. He said that Japan has an important mission to send, send a strong mission of peace out to the world. And Goi, Masahisa Goi's wife was also from Hiroshima. So this is a very meaningful event for all of us from May Peace Prevail on Earth International, as it is with all of you. And today, 76 years later, the call for global peace in a world free of nuclear weapons continues in collaboration with many of you, many of our uh, organizations, support organizations, to, in collaboration to continue the call for to shift from a culture of war to a culture of peace. We truly need an evolution of love for all life on planet Earth. To open the program today, I'm so thrilled to we welcome <clears throat> a dear friend and a supporter uh, Hereditary Chief Phil Lane Jr. representing the Ihonktawan Dakota and Chickasaw Nations. And I welcome Chief Brother Phil for opening blessings and prayer. Mitaki um, my very beloved relatives, my beloved sister Fumi, I want to extend a very warm and loving handshakes to each and every one of you on this very sacred day when we are remembering those beloved souls who passed to the spiritual world during these days and even within the year after that and continuing in this remembrance of, of, uh, of knowing that it's time to completely, completely end nuclear weapons. And I want to say on behalf of the Ihawa Chasha, Deloria Teospais, and um, all my relatives and relatives I work with, I want to extend a very heartfelt apology to the Japanese people for the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. My father told me over and over and over again since I was a small boy, he said, you know, son, there was no reason to drop those atomic bombs on Japan. There was other ways this could have been solved. There was other ways. Japan had already been defeated. And I only say that today, as we remember this day before I pray, that we must remember today is the same thing. There are so many issues before us that can be solved with love and compassion and with, with, with this wisdom that we have before us that came out of this great Holocaust. So I'm going to say that much and 
by prayer, by, by prayer. Odin Kashlawa, Kantaka, creator of the universe, most beloved one, all powerful one, most kind one, most compassionate, forgiving one. Give thanksgiving for this beautiful, beautiful remembrance of this time. Uh, relatives of Nagasaki and Hiroshima and all the Japanese people and all the world for the hurt of what is the hurt of all suffered. We ask at this time that all weapons of mass destruction forever leave this mother earth and we shall see may peace prevail on earth by 2030. And we have complete faith creator of all good things that you have put us together here for an important purpose. And may we bring our hearts and minds together in that manner. Oh my God, oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal unto them the great purpose. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O oh God, in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee. O oh God, lead them not to themselves, but guide their steps with the light of knowledge and cheer their hearts with thy love. Verily, thou art their help through the Lord. Hallelujah, Chante, wash day. Oh. Umi, can you unmute, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Brother Phil, for opening with such a deep, heartful prayer and blessing to com commence this sacred ceremony for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, next on the program, we will be showing uh, a video from Hiroshima Peace Culture Village, which is a virtual tour of Hiroshima Peace Park, where annually the commemoration takes place on, on Hiroshima Day. So uh, please, let's walk into the Hiroshima Peace Park and uh, enjoy this presentation by the Peace Culture Village. Hello everyone, my name is Miho. And I'm Mary. And we work with Peace Culture Village, a peace education nonprofit incorporated in Hiroshima, Japan. We created this Explore Hiroshima app that uses AR technology to guide users through Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park. And today we're going to show you a few stops on our tour. So let's go. This is the atomic bomb dome, one of the most famous symbols of Hiroshima and the horrors of nuclear war. As you can see from this picture, it used to be a grand European style building called the Hiroshima Industrial Promotion Hall. It was used to exhibit Hiroshima local products and for various concerts and events. It was a hub for people interested in art and culture. But on August 6, 1945, the atomic bomb exploded almost 600 meters directly above the promotion hall. It miraculously survived the atomic bombing and this is what it looks like today. We feel very lucky that it remains as a witness to what happened in this city. So using our app, you can actually enter the atomic bomb dome, which is something you can't do in the actual peace park. Before the bombing, this circular hall you see here in the center had a grand staircase leading to the building's upper floors. Our next stop is the center for the A-bomb victims, which was the first monument built in the park in 1952. The structure is a representation of an ancient Japanese shelter called a Haniwa. Under the roof of the center is a stone coffin that holds registers of the names of atomic bomb victims who have died. Every year, more names are added, and as of August 6th last year, the total number of names is 319,186. Once each year, the registers are taken out and placed in the sun to dry. The inscription on the coffin reads, Let all the souls here rest in peace, for we shall not repeat evil. This is a pledge that everyone who visits this monument is invited to make. 
We hope you too will take this pledge. This is the Children's Peace Monument, inspired by Sadako Sasaki. Sadako was exposed to the atomic bomb when she was two years old. When she was 12, she fell ill with leukemia, like many other children in Hiroshima at the time. She passed away eight months later. In this photo, Sadako wears a kimono her parents gave her to celebrate the approach of her teen years. She didn't make it to 13. It's said in Japan that if you fold 1,000 paper cranes, you'll be granted a wish. When Sadako was in the hospital, she folded over 1,300 cranes, hoping to get well. These are some of the cranes she folded. Thanks to Sadako, the paper crane has become a universal symbol of a world free from nuclear weapons. Every year, Hiroshima receives more than 10 million paper cranes from around the world. Finally, before we finish up, no visit to Hiroshima Peace Park would be complete without hearing the voices of the atomic bomb survivors, or in Japanese, Hibaksha. Although this technology has yet to come to the English version of Explore Hiroshima, we have begun to use the Japanese version to preserve the stories of atomic bomb survivors using hologram technology. This is survivor Toshiko Tanaka's hologram avatar, speaking about the cenotaph for the atomic bomb victims through our AR app. It is our hope that this technology will allow people to feel close to the survivors and personalize their stories even after they're gone. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to learn more or support us, you can visit our website at peaceculturevillage.org. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Mary and Miho, for sharing that informative video with us to visually connect us to the Hiroshima Peace Park, which is truly remains as an international sanctuary of peace. All of you uh, saw at the end of the video a, an amazing visual hologram of one of the Hiroshima survivors, Toshiko Tanaka. Uh, she was not able to join us in person, but we have a video message from her, which I would like to share with all of you today. So please listen to the voice of Toshiko Tanaka. Hello, my name is Toshiko Tanaka. I survived atomic bombing in Hiroshima on August 6th, 1945, when I was six years old and on my way to school at 8.15 a.m. Somebody shouted, B-29, the enemy bomber. I looked up and saw a tremendous flash. I was burned and exposed to radiation. The pain was incredible. I cried my way home, but our house was ruined. My mother could not recognize me. My hair was burned. I was covered in ash. My clothes were destroyed. Many doctors were dead. There were no hospitals left. Whether we lived or died was entirely up to one's physical vigor and last. I remember going into the house and seeing through our largely dam damaged roof a small patch of blue sky. Although in Spain, I thought it was so beautiful that the blue sky stayed with me. It has given me the will to live, even until today. It took only one second for a single bomb to destroy the Hirosh city of Hiroshima and 140,000 lives. All my classmates were killed. My young aunt left home that morning and never came back. Every image of that terrible day remains. My generation will be the last to tell you about this event as best we can see. I started to suffer from symptoms of radiation when I was 12. Nobody on this planet should suffer the 
same strategy. So I have one request for people. Please make many friends throughout the world. If we have close friends from around the world, we will think twice before starting the world. That's it. Personal prosperity and supremacy. Nuclear weapons will lead the earth to destruction. They are inhumane and should never have been allowed on earth. There are many people working tirelessly for a nuclear free world. For instance, ICANN is a global campaign to promote abolishment of nuclear weapons. For decades, I wish it with all my heart that the United Nations would make a treaty banning nuclear weapons. On July 7, 2017, the world took the essential step it needed towards peace. My goal now is to unite people around the world behind this treaty. Together, we can pressure Japan and the UN Security Council to take future steps towards peace with us. I know one day we will live in a nuclear free world and the beautiful blue sky will continue to shine above the heads of our future generation. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much for your moving worlds, Toshiko Tanaka. And what a legacy you have left for all of the survivors in Hiroshima as well as Nagasaki. The next speaker I'd like to introduce to you is a second generation Hibaksha. Kathleen Birkinshaw is a friend of mine and it is such, I have such deep respect and uh, for her courage and com commitment in keeping alive the story of her mother Toshiko and the Ishikawa family. Thank you very much, Fumi. Good yeah. evening to all of those in the United States and good morning to those in Japan. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. I am a second generation Hibaksha, but I wasn't aware that my mom was from Hiroshima until I was 11. Yet I was aware that she had horrible nightmares that she would wake up screaming from. I wouldn't learn the horrific memories that she had in those nightmares until I was 31 years old and I was very ill. I had been diagnosed with reflex sympathetic dystrophy, which is a chronic progressive neurological pain disease that affects your sympathetic nervous system and your immune system. Doctors have said that my immune system deficiencies are due to the radiation that my mother was exposed to in the atomic bomb. On August 6th, 76 years ago, my mother, Toshiko Ishikawa, was outside chatting with her best friend when an ear shattering popping noise and an intense burst of white light caused the ground to shake so much she grabbed her friend and they screamed. By the end of that day, she would have watched her beloved Papa die and would lose her best friend and most of her classmates. Her home was destroyed along with all the others on her street. And within the next five years, she would lose all the family members that she grew up with. My mother was only 12 years old, yet old enough to remember the death and the horror that she witnessed because she relived them in her nightmares, especially in August, throughout her life until she passed away at the age of 82 in 2015. My mother lost so much that day, but she never lost her ability to love. I watched her in my childhood as she suffered through her scars of the atomic bombing, as I watched and reacted to her PTSD effects. I also live with it now with battling reflex sympathetic dystrophy. My mom was the bravest person 
I will ever know. And I'm honored that she entrusted me with her stories and with her heart. And it's her love and her strength that emboldens me to push through my pain so I can continue to tell her story, that I can talk to students through my book, The Last Cherry Blossom, so that I am able to have the privilege that I've spoken with thousands of students around the world. And what they tell me, the one thing that really makes them move to action against nuclear weapons is a story about a 12-year-old little girl in Hiroshima and how easily it could be one of them, their family. So it's very important that 76 years now have passed. Technology and the way that we communicate has really changed. However, that need for human connection through our feelings and our emotions, that is timeless. So for the statistics and the treaties, which are all very important for them to really matter, we need to keep talking about the hearts broken, the lives that were shattered, the homes and the loved ones lost, and all that lived with the scars, physical and emotional throughout their lives. Because they need to make that connection with the humanity under those now famous mushroom clouds so that no family ever has to go through that again. And I hope that my mom sees that what I do is out of love for her and for the family that I never got to meet. I do it for that 12 year old little girl who lost her world in an instant. And yet she made our family's world brighter with her love. Thank you for honoring the atomic bomb victims and for keeping their stories alive. And through our work, may peace prevail on earth. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Kathleen. Our heart joins you on this at this time as you commemorate the memory of your dear mother and your family. And we're so honored to have you here to share your story with us. It's, it means so much to all of us. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. And now we have a short presentation of uh, Japanese koto music that is offered to us by a Hiroshima member, Mihoko Konishi. This piece is called Furusato, a song that is so dear to the Japanese heart and soul and land of Japan. It means home of the soul. So please uh, listen to the koto music Mihoko has prepared for us.
Thank you so much, Mihoko, for that just beautiful music. Thank you so much. And uh, next, um, we have a group of youth speakers who are going to talk to us about their vision of a peaceful world and how they are working to create a world free of nuclear weapons. First speaker is Kekashan Basu. She is winner of the 2016 Children's Peace Prize and the winner of the 2016 Voices for Youth Gorbachev Sheld's Legacy Award for her work on nuclear disarmament. Kekashan is also founder of Green Hope Foundation through which she works tirelessly to amplify the voices of young people, women, and girls in decision-making processes. Please welcome Kekashan Basu. Thank you, Fumi. We have gathered here on a very solemn occasion to relive the pain and agony that was thrust upon the hundreds of thousands of residents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on those two fateful days in August 1945 and the trauma that succeeding generations continue to bear. As a young person who has just completed 20 years, I am truly appalled that the weapons that caused this terrible destruction 76 years ago not only exist in our midst even today, but they have proliferated manifold in these last seven plus decades. It is this duplicity that we must expose and work against. How sanctimonious is it for the US to be celebrating Hiroshima and Nagasaki day to day when it continues to build more stockpiles of these weapons of mass destruction and refuses to ratify the TPNW? At the root of this all is the urge for power, for control, and profiteering, and it's these forces that allow this nuclear arms industry to thrive while the most technologically advanced country in the world doesn't have enough ventilators to save its citizens from the virus. The pandemic has caused misery across the world, but its impact has been disproportionately severe in LDCs, amongst people of color, indigenous communities, and women and children. Had these nuclear club of nations not been so profligate in wasting billions and trillions in surreptitiously building their arsenals and invested in basic facilities of healthcare and education, then we wouldn't have witnessed the suffering that we are seeing today. In villages of Bangladesh and Liberia, where Green Hope Foundation is working amongst COVID-19 impacted communities, not one dose of vaccine has reached them now. Thousands of children in these communities remain out of school. And as a civil society actor, we are using innovative solutions to address these solutions, the responsibility of which primarily rests with their elected governments. It is the lack of awareness among stakeholders about the true motives of profiteering and power gluttony that is allowing the nuclear arms industry to thrive. It is falsely shrouded under nationalism and security. It's made to be a topic that only scientists and elderly male politicians can discuss. All of these calisthenics that have one goal to keep it away from public scrutiny. It is the sham that my work seeks to expose through disarmament education wherein we engage the young and the elderly alike, from children to adults, because the bomb will kill everyone. It is time to channel all our combined resources, especially the young people, because we don't want our future to be ruined by the push of a button. We must bring the same sense of urgency to this nuclear disarmament movement that we have to climate change and addressing gender inequality. Their intersections need to be recognized as a common call for peace and humanity so that our future generations do not have to live in fear of the Armageddon. May peace prevail on earth, 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Keika Shan. What a sobering talk. But uh, we now feel uh, the urgency of uh, working together toward a world free of nuclear weapons. Thank you so much. And next we have Renor Jani, who is currently serving as a Pathways to Peace representative to the United Nations and works on nuclear disarmament advocacy for the Balkan region. He also serves on the United Nations Department of Global Communication Youth Steering Committee and is pursuing a bachelor's degree in human rights. Please welcome Renor Jani. Okay. Well, hello everyone. Uh, it is an honor to be here with all of you and alongside the Hibakusha Civil Society and fellow youth who work tirelessly for nuclear disarmament and abolition. My name is Renor Yani and as Fumi said, I am a Pathways to Peace representative to the United Nations. I primarily work on nuclear disarmament advocacy for the Balkan region and Albania. During its communist era, the fear of nuclear catastrophe influenced the construction of over 170,000 nuclear bunkers within Albania. Today, some of them have been turned into museums and artistic displays. Although alternative purposes have been found for them, it would be these same bunkers that people would take refuge in if there was another nuclear catastrophe somewhere in the world. Additionally, it was this existential fear alone that led to their creation, and it is the fear that humanity must relinquish and eradicate for true peace to be established. The case for this point has been made for decades. However, the recent new development of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW, marks the first legally binding treaty that calls for states to carry out a complete ban on nuclear weapons as contained in Article 1. The TPNW officially became international law this year on January 22, 2021. Pathways to Peace is proud to be an official partner organization of the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons Coalition and is honored to join over 600 organizations that represent over 100 countries. We have been working closely together on raising the awareness of the TPNW amongst the general public and government of Albania with officials and local experts. On March 20th, 2021, Pathways to Peace and I led the efforts with co-sponsoring civil society organizations to hold a conference, Peace and Security in Albania, to unify individuals from different sectors in support of European security Nuclear disarmament and peace. This conference helped to shift the discourse on nuclear weapons among civil society and in government. It also highlighted the humanitarian impact that we must take into consideration. Some included speakers and partners were Albanian parliamentarians, the OSCE, Red Cross Albania, and civil society experts. We are also currently in the early stages of collecting data and statistics of the general public support for the TPNW. Three former Albanian heads of state also signed an open letter with a total of 56 former presidents, prime ministers, foreign ministers, and defense ministers calling upon all countries to join the TPNW. As an Albanian peace builder, it is also an honor for me to lead the advocacy efforts within Pathways to Peace. If you would like to learn more about our current initiatives and updates, you can contact me and sign up for our newsletter at pathwaystopeace.org. My email is also going to be within the chat. But I thank all of the organizers and to my fellow peace builders that are attending for this moment that we have gathered here and may peace prevail on earth.
Thank you. Thank you, Renor, for holding such a strong beacon of light for uh, all of us, all of you in the Balkan regions. Thank you so much. And next, we have, we'll travel to the Ukraine where we will listen to another message sent to us by Irina Krud Kudryashova, whose grandmother is a peace representative of May Peace Prevail on Earth. International and Irina is walking, um, following the footsteps of her grandmother in becoming a peace advocate and peace builder. Here is Irina. Hello, I'm from Ukraine and my name is Irina and in Greek it means peace. So today I want to speak about peace. Sitting in front of your screen, you cannot be afraid of nuclear war and say no this will not happen in 21st century or you can be afraid that this will happen at any moment all this is not important when you realize that right now 24 7 thousands of people on both sides of the ocean are watching each other and they are ready to launch a nuclear missile within minutes after the order. If I ask you a question, the Third World War can be nuclear, you will probably answer no, because there is no sense, everyone will die. But if I ask you if nuclear war can start by an accident, the answer will be yes. Our world was at the age of death 18 times. Our history knows a lot of honest people who could prevent the nuclear war. Only the danger from the irresponsible use of nuclear energy can compare it to the danger from the nuclear weapon. In Ukraine, we faced such a disaster in 1986. I wasn't born yet and I cannot imagine how my ancestors went through it. Even now we are fighting with the consequences of the Chernobyl accident and we pray every day that this will not happen again. Being a voice of a new generation, I want to convince as many people as I can that nuclear weapon is a big problem and we have to be aware of it. And I tell everybody, may peace prevail on us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Irina, for your beautiful message from the Ukraine. And now our last speaker, Momoko Narazaki, is from Hiroshima. She's a student at Hiroshima College of Foreign Studies and for a number of years, she has been a member of Hiroshima International Youth Volunteers as a guide to foreigners who visit the Peace Memorial. Recently, she began to work part-time at Peace Culture Village, where she organizes field trips for Japanese students visiting Hiroshima, Hiroshima and facilitates online experiences for people around the world. Please welcome Momoka. Thank you, Humi-san. Hello, everyone. My name is Momoka. I am so honored and inspired to be joining you along with my fellow youth presenters. I am here representing of Youth of Hiroshima. 76 years ago, our city was robbed of everything by a single atomic bomb. The atomic bomb survivors, or as we call them, Hibaksha, have long led the international movement to eliminate nuclear weapons. But the average age of the Hibakusha is now 83. We will be the last generation to hear their stories firsthand. Soon, Hiroshima, the international city of peace culture, will be without the Hibakusha. It is critical that young people in Hiroshima take positive action to inherit the legacy of the Hibakusha and create a sustainable peace movement here in Hiroshima. However, many young people in Hiroshima don't believe 
they have the power to create peace. I thought like that once too. At the age of 15, I entered a deep depression that kept me from leaving my house for two years. I felt that I had no agency over my surroundings. I thought that I had no choice but to walk the path set before me. During this dark time, I took a chance and decided to study abroad in Canada. The experience changed my life. I met many young people who were taking action to make the world a better place. I began to think that as a citizen of Hiroshima, maybe I did have power to change the world, even in small ways. Inspired my Canadian friends, I returned to Japan and decided to dedicate my time and energy to engaging many people from all over the world and spreading the message of Hiroshima. That's how I met PCV, a nonprofit run by young people in their 30s, 20s, and 10s that is reshaping peace education in Hiroshima. At PCV, we create both online and in-person opportunities for students from around the world to think about peace culture and create the future together. Our goal isn't to teach, but to create connections and friendships. Through facilitating these programs, I've realized that the resilience and reconstruction of Hiroshima can inspire and encourage those who feel like they have no power. I once believed I had no agency or power, but now I feel like I, ha I, find, I have found my role, my voice, and a way that I can contribute not only to my community, but also to my international friends. I hope that young people who are listening to my words will feel encouraged that average people like me are working towards peace little by little. In fact, I hope you reach out to me on Instagram and we become friends. I am convinced that if we can continue to learn from each other, expand our friend circles, and connect with many people from around the world, we can create the future we want to inherit. Won't you join me? May peace prevail on earth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Momoka. And we would love to join you on your mission of peace. Thank you so much for being here and speaking on behalf of the youth from Hiroshima. So now I'd like to introduce to you Patricia Ann Davis from the Diné Choctaw Nation. Patricia is an international teacher of Navajo Diné ceremonial healing principles that are cross-cultural, intergenerational, inclusive, and universal in practice. Patricia has devoted her life to learning and practicing healing knowledge and processes handed down to her from her father, who was a medicine man. So please welcome Patricia Ann Davis. We are all a precious child of creator within creation and within the natural order laws that govern us all equally. Thus, from the perfect peace and love of creator within creation through the holy people's healing ceremonial language and sacred words, we affirm the healing of souls and the balance in living is eternally existing and harmony in communication is eternally existing. Peace in the family is eternally existing. Beauty in the environment is eternally existing. The joy of love and living the loving way is eternally existing. And we are collectively walking as humane beings, five finger people, Bella Ashlai, between Mother Earth and Father Sky. We remember and reawaken to our original constitution of the four sacred elements. 12% Earth is our physical body, 72% is the water of life, and 4% is fire, our temperature, and 6% is air, the yin the creator's sacred breath, and we are simultaneously existing within the 
environmental earth, water, fire, and air within the web of life. And from our sacred self within our sacred place in the universe. All my relatives, all healing takes place in a meditative state. Thank you, all my relatives, my family. Oh, that was so heartfelt, Patricia. Thank you for the transmission of the wisdom and knowledge from your lineage and your peoples and all the peoples, the indigenous peoples of the world. Thank you so much, Patricia, for being with us. And now I'd like to um, introduce to you um, a special flame that is burning in the heart of Ashland, Oregon. Uh, the Peace Flame, it's called the Peace Flame, and we have here the Peace Flame, a photo of the Peace Flame here. And to talk about the Peace Flame um, through a video presentation, we'd like to welcome uh, David and Irene to present their video to tell us the story about the Ashland Peace Flame. Oh, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Um, thank you, Patricia, for sharing with us your words and wisdom. We did hear you for me. Oh. We, I, but I can't see who, who we're queuing up next. Uh, Ashlyn Peace Flame. Yes. Video. And they can come off mute. Um, they won't be talking yet. We'll be showing the video first. Thank you, Becky. Our vision is to inspire, activate, and model the culture of peace in Southern Oregon, which will serve as a beacon of light for all humanity. Each one of us need to take a conscious decision to be peaceful and nonviolent in our daily existence. The World Peace Flame, the iconic symbol of peace and unity, was created in 1999 by joining seven sacred flames from five continents that were flown live to Wales. The Asian flame was lit from the eternal flame of Gandhi's memorial. In 2015, a chance encounter took place with the World Peace Flame Monument in Wales by the co-founder of the Ashland Culture of Peace Commission, Irene Kai. She was deeply inspired by the peace flame. The culture of peace has been a dream and a hope for humanity for thousands of years. The Ashland Culture of Peace Commission launched an ongoing commitment to realizing a culture of peace based on the United Nations Declaration and Program of Action on a culture of peace. A culture of peace is a set of values, attitudes, traditions, behaviors, and ways of life that involves all sectors of a community. What inspired me to bring the peace flame to Ashland is an incredible story of grace. Irene had a strong desire to bring the world peace flame to Ashland in honor of the history of Native Americans and Chinese and to heal their ancestral wounds on the land of Southern Oregon. Please light your candle. At the same time, she hoped the flame would ignite the sacred flame in our hearts. And in unity, we bring peace to ourselves and to others through our daily actions with our families, friends, and fellow human beings at large. So our mission is to provide leadership for a community-wide movement dedicated to transforming our attitudes, behaviors, and institutions into one that foster 
a harmonious relationship with each other and the natural world. What we're doing in the past, what we're doing even yesterday, is not relevant anymore. If we are brave enough to dream together of a world that is sustainable and in peace. On September 21st, 2018, the International Day of Peace, the World Peace Flame in Ashland was lit. The monument sits on the Southern Oregon University campus and the Ashland Middle School children became the flame keepers. The students refilled the eternal oil lamp with recycled biomass every Friday, rain or shine. Their dedication to keep the flame as an eternal flame caught the attention of Ambassador Anurul K. Chaudhry at the United Nations. We should know how to relate to one another without being aggressive. On September 20, 2019, Ambassador Chaudhry presented certificates of recognition at the World Peace Flame Monument at the Thalden Pavilion on the SOU campus. Peace should come from each one of us. To promote the culture of peace, it's very important uh, to start very early. This is our inspiration, our hope, and our sailing skyward. Be bigger than ourselves. The results and benefits of embracing and living in a culture of peace are enormous and a legacy for future generations. This is our ongoing dedication. The Flame Keepers are our future leaders, and with their experience and dedication to peace, their daily action leads them to be more in harmony with the world and with each other. They are the Flame. Thank you so much, uh, Irene and uh, David, for being, being the torchbearers of this flame. And Irene and um, David are here, so I'd like them to do a very, very quick, give, give us a very quick hello, David and I, Irene. That would be so beautiful. Just very quick. We need to, um, yes, there you are. Hello, David. Do not let. Okay. Hello, hello. Uh, just thank you, and and may peace prevail on earth and around the world. A message from uh, the World Peace Flame in Ashland, Oregon. May peace prevail on earth. Thank um, you. May thank peace you. prevail on you. Bless you both for your mission and your commitment to keeping the flame of peace alive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, as we near the hour, we need to uh, wrap up very quickly. I'm going to have to um, put aside some of the presentations I had uh, planned and, and jump to uh, Monica Willard, who will be reading to us the nuclear prayer. Monica is with the United Religions Initiative and so, Monica, a very quick presentation. We'd love to hear the nuclear prayer. I'm honored to share the prayer that opens the Voices for a World Free of Nuclear Weapons each meeting. And we've used it around the world for so many things. And to have it for this specific occasion is such an honor to be with you. The nuclear prayer. The beginning and the end are in your hands, O creator of the universe. And in our hands, you have placed the fate of this planet. We who are tested by having both creative and destructive powers in our free will, turn to you in sober fear and intoxicating hope. We ask for your guidance and to share in your imagination in our deliberations about the use of nuclear force. Help us to lift the fog of atomic darkness that hovers so pervasively over our earth, your earth, so that soon all eyes may see the magnific may see life magnified by your pure light. Bless all of us who wait today for your presence and who dedicate ourselves 
to achieve your intended peace and rightful equilibrium on earth. In the name of all that is holy and all that is hoped. Amen. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. Thank you, Monica, for being with us to share the special nuclear prayer, which means so much to so many people. And uh, we're coming to the close of the hour, and we need to keep very uh, um, the timing because of the synchronized global meditation as, at exactly 8.15 a.m. So to close this segment, I'd like to invite Marty K. Casey to share with us a song that she's been practicing for quite a while. She's going to surprise our Japanese friends with a little bit of her Japanese singing. Marty K. Casey is an activist and she is founder of the Ungun Institute that is working to free the world from trauma and violence. So here you go, Marty. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here and may peace prevail on earth. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Shekai hei wa wa wada wada kalahaji malu. Shekai hei wa wa makoto no hei wa. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Oh dear, Dr. Marty K. Casey, thank you for your, your gift of song and thank you for reminding us that peace begins with us, with each and every one of us. Thank you for being with us, Mar Marty K. Casey. And uh, we are on time now, and I need to quickly uh, pass the stage on to the MC of the Japanese uh, segment of this program. And I'd like to invite Keiko Nakamichi to take over for the next uh, present uh, programs to follow. So please, Keiko, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Humi. And thank you all for the wonderful and inspiring presentation and offerings. I'm so grateful to you all. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the annual Hiroshima World Peace Flag Ceremony Program. I'm Keiko Nakamichi a volunteer member of World Peace Flag Ceremony Hiroshima, serving as host of this program. Before we begin, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you. It is a great honor to have so many honorable global leaders and amazing peace builders here. And also, Thank you so much for those who are watching this program and joining us to offer prayers for world peace from Hiroshima out to the world. And especially thanks to Dot Maber from Global Silent Minute, who will lead the global synchronized meditation, and to Becky, who is our Zoom tech and to many of our partner organizations for making our ceremony possible. Now we officially commence the 29th Hiroshima Wild Peace Flag Ceremony. 
August 6, the day that the first atomic bomb was used in human history. We believe that it is the most significant day for humanity to reflect on peace. Hiroshima and Nagasaki have become symbols of world peace. Peace exists within us. It is time to connect ourselves to our inner peace and at the same time to offer sincere prayers for peace in honor of all life on this planet. It is a precious moment for us to build a new era of peace, to create a culture of peace. So let's unite our heart and pray, may peace prevail on earth. Due to the coronavirus, we have been holding this ceremony online since last year, sending prayers for peace through the internet. Before COVID, the Hiroshima World Peace Flag Ceremony was held annually for 27 years in front of the atomic bomb dome in Hiroshima Peace Park during the annual commemoration on August 6. The atomic bomb dome has become a symbol of world peace and it's registered as a world heritage. Normally, there would be hundreds of thousands of people from countries around the world who visit the Peace Park on this Memorial Day. So many peace-loving people join us, and the city is filled with a very powerful energy of one united voice calling for everlasting peace. Today, we will experience the same spirit of oneness through the internet. The flag ceremony invites everyone, regardless of nationality, religion, race, or beliefs, to join in prayers for world peace. The intention of the flag ceremony is to commune as one in the spirit of the universal message, may peace prevail on earth. I'd like to take some time now to introduce some of our activities in Hiroshima. You can see these beautiful hand folded paper cranes. As you know, 1000 origami cranes are folded to symbolize humanity's wish for peace. At the foot of the statue of Sadako, there is a plate that reads, this is our cry, this is our prayer, peace on earth. Peace art, prayers for every country on earth are written by hand by Hiroshima members to form a big peace art circle. The image of this peace art symbolizes planet earth floating in space is surrounded with peaceful vibrations. Here is a rotating peace art project with positive words and prayers written by many people who have left their message of peace. It's a very popular project. This is the Peace Pulse International Art Exhibition the theme of the exhibition is Love to Hiroshima, Love to Nagasaki. As you can see, the drawings are very touchy. These are peace dolls made of traditional Japanese craft paper to which we add small stickers printed with the message, may peace prevail on earth in different languages. Through our ongoing peace work, the energy of love, healing, harmony, and the peace will embrace all life on earth, leading to a change in our way of thinking and the creation of a new world. Now I would like to introduce Mr. Tominaga, representative of the Hiroshima World Peace Flag Ceremony for opening remarks. Hello everyone, my name is Shohei Tominaga. I'll show you uh, 
video message from Hiroshima. みなさん、こんにちは。一瞬にして完全に美しい町に蘇ることができました。しかしながら原爆による また、お互いの主義主張、嫌悪感、恐怖心によって世界各地で民族紛争、宗教対立、テロ行為により多くの人々が毎日のように傷つき亡くなっています。私たちのグループは毎年8月6日、原爆の日に世界各国の平和を
that will lead the special global and silent minute at 815. I will hand over the stage to you, Dot. Arigato, Keiko. It is an honor to offer this global silent minute at the exact time the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Dedicated in the spirit of cooperation, healing and freedom, freedom of life and freedom from all nuclear weapons in the spirit of peace. We are grateful to the Hiroshima members who have been organizing events for the past 29 years in commemorating the annual observance of Hiroshima Day on August 6th. Here we see the atomic bomb dome located in Hiroshima Peace Park, a symbol of Hiroshima and a focus for prayers for world peace. Although the atomic bomb dome was located almost directly underneath the explosion, it somehow avoided complete destruction and the remains of the building still stand today. It is a symbol of hope for everlasting peace and the elimination of nuclear weapons. In front of this symbolic monument dedicated to peace, the Hiroshima members have presented the flag ceremony annually for 27 years. For the last two years, we are here online, broadcasting this significant moment to the global community. We are eternally vigilant in our call for peace. Across the street from the atomic bomb dome is Saikuji Temple. It was destroyed in the bomb, yet many tombstones remain, partially melted from the atomic blast. The temple was rebuilt with a peace bell, which rings annually at 8.15 a.m., while Japan stops to observe one minute of silence to honor not only those who perished in Hiroshima, but all those who have died and suffered in war and violence. The Global Silent Minute, inspired by the Big Ben Silent Minute, was introduced in the Second World War by Wellesley Tudor Pohl as a spiritual weapon to harness the power of silence in selfless service to be used for the benefit of all, to bring an end to the world war and ultimately all warring, to bring peace to humankind and all life. The power of silence is greater than we know. And our Japanese brothers and sisters know the impact of the pain and suffering of nuclear weapons. And we as a community of nations stand together with Japan in the healing power of the fire of love. We come together on both sides of the veil to ensure that this never happens again. We will use our spiritual weapons, silence as action and sacred unity as we hold the intention of the healing of nations for global cooperation, peace and freedom and call for a world free of nuclear weapons. Let us prepare. We take a deep breath and imagine peace and healing in our own hearts and link our hearts across distance and now invite all those on the other side of the veil to cooperate with us. We prepare to hear the temple bell ring in Hiroshima at exactly 8.15 a.m.
Arigato. May peace prevail on earth. Over to you, Keiko. Thank you so much, Dot, for leading us to the beautiful and the powerful Silent Minute. I believe everyone here is still feeling the energy of love and the healing which we radiated during the moment of silence. I feel it has embraced the whole planet as well. Silence is a great action and the way to connect our hearts as one. So touching. Thank you so much. The next segment highlights another profound voice calling for peace. I'd like to introduce Ms. Yamagata, who is a member of Hiroshima World Peace Black Ceremony. She is a Hibakusha survivor and will share her experiences of the atomic bomb when she was just two and a half years old. I will be pleased to share her video with you. Mr. Tominaga, can you stop the screen share for a moment and restart it with the audio? Please. If you stop the screen share and then click share computer sound, we, sh we should be able to then hear it. I think you may be able to hear it, but we're not able to. Thank you. Sadly, we are still not hearing it, Mr. Tominaga. すると、ピタッとしたり、私たち父の全身に突き刺さったガラスを取っては布を巻き付けしてきました。また右側を見ると台所の方から日の手が上がり父が二人を助け出してくれました。夜防空壕に行きました。一晩中外は燃えていました。その中は十人ぐらいの人がいた
Thank you, Yamagata san, for a beautiful sharing. Okay, now I would like to share the special three other messages sent to us. I will be pleased to show you three their show messages. Me. Firstly, the message from the Mayor, Makaz Mayor Kazumi Matsui of Hiroshima. Mr. Tominaga, could you turn the volume up again, please? Show message. The 29th Hiroshima World Peace Flag Ceremony is 開催されるにあたり、メッセージをお送りいたします。1945年8月6日、広島は一発の原子爆弾により数多くの尊い命が奪われ、町は破壊し尽くされました。原爆の参加を経験した広島はこんな思いを他の誰にもさせてはならないという
その願いを世界に向けて発信されることは、誠に意義深く、その取り組みに対し深く敬意を表します。本誌も世界の165カ国、地域の8000を超える都市で構成する平和市長会議の加盟都市とともに、核兵器廃絶に向けた犠牲者の行動を後押しする環境づくりに全力で取り組んでいく所存です。皆様には今後とも絶対役である核兵器の廃絶と世界高級平和の実現に向け、共に力を尽くし行動してくださることを心から期待しています。終わりに第29回広島ワールドピースフラッグセレモニーのご成功とご参加の皆様の今後ますますのご検証とご多幸を心よりお祈りいたします。令和3年2021年8月6日、広島市長、松井和美。Next, Mayor Rick b l a n z i a u d i of Honolulu. Message from Mayor Rick b l a n z i a u d i I'm pleased to send my warmest aloha to everyone. Viewing and participating in the live webcast of the World Peace Ceremony in Hiroshima. Mahalo to Make Peace Prevail on Earth International for hosting this memorial event, which brings people together with the message of world peace and inspires them to foster unity in their communities. The ceremony offers time to pause and remembrance of those whose lives were lost and provides an apt occasion to contemplate on rising above our differences and living in harmony. On behalf of the people of the city and county of Honolulu, I congratulate May Peace Prevail on Earth International on its 29th year of hosting this commemoration and extend deep appreciation for its commitment to spreading the message of peace in our world. Rick Ranjadi. Lastly, I'd like to introduce the message from Rika Sayonji, Vice President, May Peace Prevail on Earth International. I'm happy to share her beautiful video with you. でも、忘れてはならない日であると思うのです。全ての人がここに祈りを捧げ、この日から学び、この日から新たな平和の未来を創造していくべき、そんな日であると思うのです。今、東京ではオリンピックが行われています。オリンピック委員会会長のバッハ氏
祈り続けたいと述べたそうです。76年前の8月に広島と長崎の原爆が起こされたのは悲劇中の悲劇でありました。多くの命は失われ、大自然が破壊されました。しかし、この悲劇はこの地に平和の祈りの響きを生み出しました。今ではこの場所は平和と調和を象徴する場所となり、愛と許しの祈りが響く場所となりました。その場所に訪れる人は、おのずと平和の心に目覚め、平和の大使として生きることを決意するのだと思います。そのような場へと気づき、変容を遂げさせたのは、一人一人の平和への強い思いと祈りであったと思います。広島と長崎で起きた悲劇を生かしていくのは私たち一人一人の選択であり責任であると思います。今日はそれぞれの場所で多くの祈りが響き合い心を一つに世界の平和を祈れることをありがたく思っています。物質が私たちを豊かにしてくれるのではなく、私たちの一人一人の意識が豊かさを創造していくのだと思います。毎年、原爆投下の時間に合わせ、世界平和に意識を一つに祈りを捧げられる豊かな命の喜びを感じています。そのような場を作ってくださっている皆様方に心より感謝申し上げます。世界人類が平和でありますように。Thank you so much. I appreciate all those beautiful messages. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to move on to the main program, the World Peace Flag Ceremony. Please join us and add your voice to send peace to every country on Earth. During this special visual presentation for peace to prevail on Earth, this is a declaration of peace from the heart of Hiroshima. Let us commence. The World Peace Flag Ceremony. Asia. May peace be in Asia. Afghanistan. May peace be in Afghanistan. Albania. May peace be in Albania. Azerbaijan. May peace be in Azerbaijan. Bahrain. May peace be in Bahrain. Bangladesh. 
May peace be in Bangladesh. Bhutan. May peace be in Bhutan. Brunei Dalsalam. May peace be in Brunei Dalsalam. Cambodia. May peace be in Cambodia. China. May peace be in China. Cyprus. May peace be in Cyprus. Georgia. May peace be in Georgia. India. May peace be in India. Indonesia. May peace be in Indonesia. Iran. May peace be in Iran. Iraq. May peace be in Iraq. Israel. May peace be in Israel. Japan. May peace be in Japan. Jordan. May peace be in Jordan. Kazakhstan. May peace be in Kazakhstan. Republic of Korea. May peace be in Republic of Korea. North Korea. May peace be in North Korea. Kuwait. May peace be in Kuwait. Kyrgyzstan. May peace be in Kyrgyzstan. Laos. May peace be in Laos. Lebanon. May peace be in Lebanon. Malaysia. May peace be in Malaysia. Maldives. May peace be in Maldives. Mongolia. May peace be in Mongolia. Myanmar. May peace be in Myanmar. Nepal. May peace be in Nepal. Oman. May peace be in Oman. 
Pakistan. May peace be in Pakistan. Philippines. May peace be in Philippines. Qatar. May peace be in Qatar. Saudi Arabia. May peace be in Saudi Arabia. Singapore. May peace be in Singapore. Sri Lanka. May peace be in Sri Lanka. Syria. May peace be in Syria. Tajikistan. May peace be in Tajikistan. Thailand. May peace be in Thailand. Timor Lest. May peace be in Timor Lest. Turkey. May peace be in Turkey. Turkmenistan. May peace be in Turkmenistan. United Arab Emirates. May peace be in United Arab, Arab Emirates. Uzbekistan. May peace be in Uzbekistan. Vietnam. May peace be in Vietnam. Yemen. May peace be in Yemen. Oceania. May peace be in Oceania. Australia. May peace be in Australia. Fiji. May peace be in Fiji. Kiribati. May peace be in Kiribati. Marshall Islands. May peace be in Marshall Islands. Micronesia. May peace be in Micronesia. Nauru. May peace be in Nauru. New Zealand. May peace be in New Zealand. Palau. May peace be in Palau. Papua New Guinea. May peace be in Papua New Guinea. Samoa. May peace be in Samoa.
Solomon Island. May peace be in Solomon Islands. Tonga. May peace be in Tonga. Tuvalu. May peace be in Tuvalu. Vanuatu. May peace be in Vanuatu. Europe. May peace be in Europe. Andorra. May peace be in Andorra. Armenia. May peace be in Armenia. Austria. May peace be in Austria. Belarus. May peace be in Belarus. Belgium. May peace be in Belgium. Bosnia and Herzegovina. May peace be in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bulgaria. May peace be in Bulgaria. Croatia. May peace be in Croatia. Czech Republic. May peace be in Czech Republic. Denmark. May peace be in Denmark. Estonia. May peace be in Estonia. Finland. May peace be in Finland. France. May peace be in France. Germany. May peace be in Germany. Greece. May peace be in Greece. Hungary. May peace be in Hungary. Iceland. May peace be in Iceland. Ireland. May peace be in Ireland. Italy. May peace be in Italy. Latvia. May peace be in Latvia. Liechtenstein. May peace be in Liechtenstein. Lithuania. May peace be in Lithuania. Luxembourg. May peace be in Luxembourg. Malta. 
May peace be in Malta. Moldova. May peace be in Moldova. Monaco. May peace be in Monaco. Montenegro. May peace be in Montenegro. Netherlands. May peace be in Netherlands. North Macedonia. May peace be in North Macedonia. Norway. May peace be in Norway. Poland. May peace be in Poland. Portugal. May peace be in Portugal. Romania. May peace be in Romania. Russia. May peace be in Russia. San Marino. May peace be in San Marino. Serbia. May peace be in Serbia. Slovakia. May peace be in Slovakia. Slovenia. May peace be in Slovenia. Spain. May peace be in Spain. Sweden. May peace be in Sweden. Switzerland. May peace be in Switzerland. Ukraine. May peace be in Ukraine. United Kingdom. May peace be in United Kingdom. Vatican. May peace be in Vatican. North and Central America. May peace be in North and Central America. Antigua and Barbuda. May peace be in Antigua and the Barbuda. Bahamas. May peace be in Bahamas. Barbados. May peace be in Barbados. Belize. May peace be in Belize. Canada. May peace be in Canada.
Costa Rica. May peace be in Costa Rica. Cuba. May peace be in Cuba. Dominica. May peace be in Dominica. Dominican Republic. May peace be in Dominican Republic. El Salvador. May peace be in El Salvador. Grenada. May peace be in Grenada. Guatemala. May peace be in Guatemala. Haiti. May peace be in Haiti. Honduras. May peace be in Honduras. Jamaica. May peace be in Jamaica. Mexico. May peace be in Mexico. Nicaragua. May peace be in Nicaragua. Panama. May peace be in Panama. Saint, Vince, Saint Christopher and Nevis. May peace be in Saint Christopher and Nevis. Saint Lucia. May peace be in Saint Lucia. Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. May peace be in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. Trinidad and Tobago. May peace be in Trinidad and the Tobago. United States of America. May peace be in United States of America. South America. May peace be in South America. Argentina. May peace be in Argentina. Bolivia. May peace be in Bolivia. Brazil. May peace be in Brazil. Chile. May peace be in Chile. Colombia. May peace be in Colombia. Ecuador. May peace be in Ecuador. Guyana. May peace be in Guyana. 
Paraguay. May peace be in Paraguay. Peru. May peace be in Peru. Suriname. May peace be in Suriname. Uruguay. May peace be in Uruguay. Venezuela. May peace be in Venezuela. Africa. May peace be in Africa. Algeria. May peace be in Algeria. Angora. May peace be in Angora. Benin. May peace be in Benin. Botswana. May peace be in Botswana. Burkina Faso. May peace be in Burkina Faso. Burundi. May peace be in Burundi. Cabo Verde. May peace be in Cabo Verde. Cameroon. May peace be in Cameroon. Central African Republic. May peace be in Central African Republic. Chad. May peace be in Chad. Comoros. May peace be in Comoros. The Democratic Republic of Congo. May peace be in Democratic Republic of Congo. Republic of Congo. May peace be in Republic of Congo. Cote d'Ivoire. May peace be in Cote d'Ivoire. Djibouti. May peace be in Djibouti. Egypt. May peace be in Egypt. Equatorial Guinea. May peace be in Equatorial Guinea. Eritrea. May peace be in Eritrea. Iswatini. May peace be in Iswatini. Ethiopia. May peace be in Ethiopia. Gabon. May peace be in Gabon. Gambia. 
May peace be in Gambia. Ghana. May peace be in Ghana. Guinea. May peace be in Guinea. Guinea Bissau. May peace be in Guinea Bissau. Kenya. May peace be in Kenya. Lesotho. May peace be in Lesotho. Liberia. May peace be in Liberia. Libya. May peace be in Libya. Madagascar. May peace be in Madagascar. Malawi. May peace be in Malawi. Mali. May peace be in Mali. Mauritania. May peace be in Mauritania. Mauritius. May peace be in Mauritius. Morocco. May peace be in Morocco. Mozambique. May peace be in Mozambique. Namibia. May peace be in Namibia. Niger. May peace be in Niger. Nigeria. May peace be in Nigeria. Rwanda. May peace be in Rwanda. Sao Tome and Principe. May peace be in Sao Tome and the Principe. Senegal. May peace be in Senegal. Seychelles. May peace be in Seychelles. Sierra Leone. May peace be in Sierra Leone. Somalia. May peace be in Somalia. South Africa. May peace be in South Africa. South Sudan. May peace be in South Sudan. Sudan. May peace be in Sudan. Tanzania. May peace be in Tanzania. Togo. May peace be in Togo. Tunisia. May peace be in Tunisia. Uganda. May peace be in Uganda. Zambia. May peace be in Zambia.
Zimbabwe. May peace be in Zimbabwe. Indigenous nations. May peace be in indigenous nations. All the other regions of the world. May peace be in all the other regions of the world. Hiroshima. May peace be in Hiroshima. Nagasaki. May peace be in Nagasaki. Japan. May peace be in Japan. Please unmute yourself if you want three times together. May peace, May peace prevail, prevail on earth. May peace be there on earth. May peace prevail on all. May peace prevail. On all. Thank you so much. And please join me now in a moment of silence to close the ceremony. Thank you so much, everyone, for offering heartfelt prayers for global peace. I believe our prayers have reached every corner of the world for the healing of souls and the healing of nations, embracing all living things on this planet. We are so grateful to you all. So beautiful, so touching. Thank you so much. We will now close our ceremony with a special song offering by our dear friend, Christine Hoffman. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here singing for peace today on this very important day. I'm feeling that I'm going to do an improvisational song prayer, which will be born in this moment in a style that I call soul loam. Soul is light weaving with ohm, the vibration of the universe. And I like to think that we are all sending our prayers and our voices together and I will be singing our collective song.
Thank you so much, Christine, <clears throat> for your for your beautiful and sincere prayer, offering your music. I my heart is so full, almost crying. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. You always touch us so deeply with your heartfelt music. Thank you so much. And now, back to you, Humi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you, Keiko. And I'm joining you. I'm getting a little teary myself. Thank you so much, Kristen, for your offering. And I'm just reading this text, a uh, chat that says, gorgeous voice of enchantment, healing, and peace. So thank you from all of us. Thank you for your gift. And um, uh, we would be closing now uh, if it was the, the normal program, but we went a little over time the first uh, segment of the program. So I'd like to share a couple of presentations that we weren't able to do in the first program. It's uh, coming up is Jennifer Kim offering peace breathing practices and followed by Linda DeHart's Flags of One Family. So here is Jennifer Kim, longtime friend of May Peace Prevail on Earth International with uh, her husband, uh, Master Kim. Uh, they run the Peace School in Chicago. So Jennifer, please lead us in the practice of peace breathing. Thank you so very much, Fumi. And thank you, Keiko, as well. You've led us through a very emotional and moving event today. Uh, Kristen, you touch every single person's life. So thank you as well. You share your gifts, and we all have a gift we can share, and we all have the gift of breath. We can make every breath a breath of peace for ourselves, for humanity, and all nature, all living things. Let's breathe together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Let's breathe together in silence for a moment. Peace. Thank you very, very much. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And we, after Kristen's song, taking in all that beautiful love energy within our bodies, we were able to breathe the peace through, in and out, throughout our bodies to even uh, exponentially expand that energy field of love. So thank you so much, Jennifer. And um, 
Next is a, a very special video I'd like to play, but I wonder if um, you can spotlight Linda, um, Becky, if you can find her. You know, we still have over 200 people here. If we can spotlight uh, Linda DeHart. That, oh, hello, Linda. And, and thank you for being patient. We were uh, planning to have you during the first hour, but I think this is a beautiful, auspicious way of closing this event with your beautiful video, uh, Flags of One Family. You often call them uh, the wings of the heart. So these are um, flags of many colors expressing and representing unity, diversity, and cooperation between our global family. So um, in this video, uh, we, we are accompanied with the music of Gary Malkin and with poetry uh, read by Susan McCrum. Uh, Linda, would you so like to say something very brief before we, we show it? We need to uh, unmute, Linda. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. So I actually think that this is a very beautiful way to end our whole experience today. And that's, that's it. Beautiful. It is a profound way to end it with this music, uh, the flags waving of one family and of just very sacred words spoken by Sarah Crum. So um, we're ready for the video now. Thank you, Be Becky, thank you. You are invited to experience unity. It's time to put aside the differences that divide us. And embrace the beauty of each one of us being different, being unique, being ourselves. in the essence of who we truly are. A beautiful array of human beings across the planet. So many different ways of being human. So let us get to know each other Let's spend time with each other. Let's learn from each other. And let's open our hearts to each other. And let's find the unity that exists right in the middle of the richness of our diversity. We are human. We are unique. We are one.
Mm, thank you, Linda Hart. De Hart, for being with us today and also for the gift of those flags of one family. Thank you so much. And we, I have a few offerings before we close. And um, I think Mihoko is here. Uh, is Mihoko here? She was the uh, lovely uh, musician who played koto music for us in the first hour. I believe she's it, live from Hiroshima Peace Park, operating camera two. Is that right, um, Becky? Is camera two still online? I'm looking for them. Let's see. I do see. Yes. Oh, I think can. it's camera two. There we go. Yes, to invite her um, to stand in front of the camera. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear us. Mihoko-san. <laughs> uh, Keiko, can you reach her? So Mihoko-san, who's operating this camera too, live from Hiroshima Peace Park, um, sends a package of peace dolls to me almost monthly. And she's been doing this for months. And, oh, there she is. Hello, Mihoko-san. And I want to share with you what she sends me. Look at these beautiful origami dolls. And these are being uh, mailed to me monthly, and I have a stack of them. I'd like to use them to uh, gift them to you, whoever would like to um, receive some of these. I, I do have enough uh, for, you know, to send you a, a uh, you know, a, a dozen of these at a time. So please let me know. There's a bookmark and each of these are handmade by um, people in Hiroshima. And they're so exquisite. They're, they're, you know, every face has a different expression. Every face. It's so beautiful. So please, in, in the chat, send me your email and I will get in touch with you and make sure that um, they are sent to you. So again, um, leave your email in the chat. Um, so we're coming to a close now and I, I'd like to thank all of our speakers and presenters. Uh, who shared with us today. Uh, what a sacred ceremony we uh, experienced together. And uh, we are the beloved community. And together, we are committing again to the creation of a culture of peace. Uh, as we learned from the past, we look to the future and we are strong together, and we rise up together in unity. Uh, so let's create together an evolution of love, an evolution of love. Uh, we can create um, a reaction of love and light, equality, um, and a deep appreciation for Mother Earth. Uh, the message, may peace prevail on Earth, becomes ever so important to live with it day, daily in our hearts. And I invite you all to add this prayer to any prayers that you may currently have. Uh, and um, we're so grateful if you would do that and join the worldwide movement may peace prevail on earth and every prayer may peace prevail on earth goes out as ripples and can you imagine they activate all of those peaceful standing as acupuncture needles of the work of the earth continuing the healing and souls of mother earth and of all humanity uh, i'd like to take this time to uh, thank our interpreters kumiko-san and Yashio, Becky, if they're still here, if you can um, spotlight them too. Uh, what a service of love. You know, I know how it's not easy to be interpreting and Kumiko always offers her, her herself 
and her service in, in, in peace to us. And this is Yashio. Hello, Yashio. Um, Yashio is, in fact, um, uh, a um, staff of Goi Peace Foundation. So we worked together many years, and it's so good to have you, Yashio. I hope your interpreting experience was, was very um, fruitful and inspiring. Uh, I know that our Japanese members truly appreciated uh, to be able to understand what was going on and to follow the program. So deep, deep gratitude to you. And uh, also extend heartfelt gratitude to our tech wizard, our tech master, uh, Becky. I don't know, Becky, if you want to come and um, say hello or, or be with us spotlight there you are becky thank you so much um deep gratitude i mean would you like to share some words uh, i know you know you've been experienced this program very deeply from beginning to end and even for weeks now so yes uh, some words may peace prevail on earth deepest gratitude infinite oh. gratitude to everybody who held space for this with and for us for everyone who cared so much about every little detail and for the details in our heart that are moving us towards unity and peace in this world now mm. thank you becky and we all look forward to walking the path of peace uh, as we move forward um so with this, we would like to conclude the, the program. And uh, I think, Becky, if we could highlight some of the members here, that we could go on gallery view, gallery view. And I'm going to invite everybody to wave, wave at each other, and uh, say, may peace prevail on Earth. Share in the spirit of peace together. So if we can go to gallery view. Oh, I guess uh, there we are. Look how beautiful we are. Hello, everyone. Let's wave to each other, send our love and blessings from our heart out to the world. And um, if we can unmute everyone, Becky, we can say may peace prevail on earth together. And may our voices echo out to the world. Thank you. 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 Beautiful event in commemoration of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. I'm so glad you were all here with us and we could share in this sacred moment together. Um, blessing each other, praying with, e with each other, and just growing in love with each other. So um, I invite you to stay for a few minutes longer because we were asked by Marty, Dr. Marty K. Casey, who sang the last a song after the first um, uh, part of the program. She sang for us, Let There Be Peace on Earth. She is going to be having an event called Black Sunday on uh, this coming Sunday to really address, um, you know, world free of violence of gun violence, not only gun violence, but violence against all humanity. 
and to heal the trauma. So she has an event on Sunday and she asked us to pass the baton on from this event, Nagasaki Hiroshima 76, pass the baton and I have the baton here and I'm gonna pass this baton uh, virtually on to um, Marty, Dr. Marty, and she will open Black Sunday program with our passing the baton on to her with all these people uh, sending her blessings from this program. And especially she wanted the people from Japan to be with us. So, um, Becky, how shall we do this? You will let me know when you're let me Just know when stop we... the recording and we'll stop the live stream. Thank okay. you, everybody. <laughs>